There's a need to transfer a moderate output across fairly long distances. For example, from wind energy turbines out to sea, to mines or other isolated units. Traditionally, you use overhead lines to carry energy over long distances, but there's opposition to putting up such new lines nowadays. So, there's a need on the market to find a way to transfer energy efficiently across very long distances, and this is where direct current techniques come into the picture. Direct current cables are manufactured by ABB High Voltage Cables in Karlskrona in southern Sweden. We're mainly focusing on becoming world leaders in HVDC technology, both with the classic paper insulation as well as extruded cables. The traditional paper cable is made up of several layers of paper, while the extrusion technique involves melting polymer pellets in an extruder, in this way creating an insulation material. The cable used in HVDC light in Gotland is of course developed to be laid underground, because we want a concept that offers easy installation, quick and inexpensive for customers. In many countries they're discussing going over the cable, and this is where the HVDC concept comes in, and it's where we're aiming, to be able to replace the grids, the big overhead line networks. We developed extruded cable, and parallel to this, Ludwig developed their converter stations. We have known the theory behind it for some time, but we couldn't do anything in practice due to the limitations of the semiconductors they had in those days. This new IGBT transistors enabled us to translate these theories into practice. ABB can offer economically feasible solutions in the lower power range with all the advantages of HVDC and the forced commutative converters. It's an entirely new technique. You could call it stage two of HVDC. As we had the first at Gotland in 1954, we're naturally keen in getting the next generation here in Gotland as well. Wind energy came into the picture at the beginning of the 80s. The Swedish power grid set up the first large-scale wind energy production in Sweden, a 2 megawatt unit, which was then gradually extended down in southern Gotland. The big consumers are of course the city of Visby, as well as Cementa, a concrete manufacturer on the east coast. We've been experiencing disturbances on the factory's network and there's been a failure on the grid. But what bothers us are the voltage dips that occur now and then on the Gotland grid. And as this is a process industry, the effect for us is devastating. Everything grinds to a halt and we have to start from scratch again. It's terribly irritating. What we above all want to achieve here is a network free of disturbances, which eliminates these problems. That's our prime objective. Down in this specific area, demand was such that the existing lines couldn't carry any more. It was either a matter of setting up, say, a, a conventional 130 kilovolt line, the 70 kilometers from Ness up to Visby. We also considered an underground cable, but uh, it's all too expensive. The big challenge is parallel operation with the existing EC network. The wind energy and the way the network behaves. We have the cable, we're constructing the converter stations. But the big challenge is adapting to the grid and stabilizing the converter stations. 
The electricity produced by the wind energy turbines, about 100 in all in the far south of Gotland, will be delivered to the consumers in Visby with the help of two DC cables. The distance to Visby is 70 kilometers, and the transfer power will be 50 megawatts. Both stations are built on a concrete platform. The equipment's made up of a control system, a cooling system, three valve enclosures, one for each phase, and a relay interlocking plant. A phase reactor will be set up in the inner yard, together with filter equipment and AC switchgear. We're connecting the converters to the existing distribution plant in Visby, which is a simple operation. We'll be building a new distribution plant in Ness, in this case to uh, enable further wind energy turbines to be linked up and create a central point for all the energy generated through wind energy. Closures are pre-assembled and tested before delivery from ABB power systems in Ludvika. The enclosures are placed in their respective positions on the site, then connected to the underground cable link directly cast into the concrete platform. The cooling towers are fitted onto a separate concrete platform designed to deal with any possible leakage from the cooling system. The cooling towers are connected to the cooling module, equipped among other things with pumps and an auxiliary power source. The three-phase reactors are encapsulated to screen the electromagnetic field and high-frequency radiation. Assembling the components in the AC distribution unit and in the filter in the inner yard can be carried out very quickly and simply, thanks to the cast concrete platform. And here, the connection to the 70 kilometer long DC cables being made ready. The final stage sees a roof being fitted onto the modular outer walls of the inner yard. This measure reduces radio interference as well as noise levels. It also protects the components from wind and weather. Another advantage is to blend in the station with the surroundings, making it easier to position. The inauguration was held in November 1999 with the participation of the head of ABB in Sweden, Anders Narvinger, and with Sweden's Minister of the Environment, Shell Larsson, making the opening speech. Yes, this is certainly a technique that will facilitate the rapid expansion of wind energy as a renewable source of energy that we want to implement. With HVDC light, the existing AC network can be enabled to transfer energy, to a place situated far from a main power grid or to isolated places such as islands or an oil or gas rig or feed power via cable from an outer area to an inner city. HVDC light can also supply a large AC network with energy from a distant production unit such as a hydropower plant. wind energy turbine, solar energy plants, or gas rig. These small production units can in turn supply energy to islands and small consumers. As you can see, HVDC light has a practically unlimited range of applications in its field. The first HVDC light plant in the world has been delivered to Gotland and has now been followed up, for example, by the 180 megawatt direct link in Australia. 
HVDC Light offers remarkable dynamic characteristics and fast delivery. It's an ideal alternative for energy suppliers looking to optimize their networks.